Uh, thank you all so much for your patience. Sorry to keep you out here in the heat. Um, it's 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 under control, but it was a it was a pretty chaotic situation at the beginning of this. So let me just give you some numbers to start with. <clears throat> at present, we've got about 27 victims, uh, smuggling victims. 11 of those have been transported to the hospital for various heat-related um, and minor medical injuries. Uh, EMS was out here with us. The ESD, uh, ESD2 was out here with us. Uh, Acadian Ambulance, STRAC, as far as, and, as, uh, and Bear County uh, Emergency Management folks, everybody worked together beautifully. Uh, to, to, and the Border Patrol agents that are here, everybody worked together beautifully to bring this thing to a, a, as, as peaceful uh, a status right now as we, as we could have. Uh, this morning we received information that there was a smuggling operation in effect um, that several dozen people were being smuggled. Um, what we knew is that it was some sort of, the smuggling method was some sort of a long gooseneck trailer that was being utilized. So we were able to, to establish surveillance on it as it was moving this way. Our undercovers from our transnational group, uh, from the organized crime unit, uh, were able to, to get eyes on the trailer as it came into the location, being uh, towed by a fifth wheel uh, uh, work truck and trailed by a, a SUV that we believe was going to be a decoy vehicle or a counter surveillance vehicle. They saw the vehicle pulling the trailer and the, and the trail vehicle pull in here and uh, we're, we, we had aircraft up, on, up, up giving us air support. We were able to verify that there were several people moving around the trailer is what we were told. Well, what we were able to find out is that they used that time to unload the people from the trailer. So it's a gooseneck trailer, long with two um, corrugated pipes on it that are like culvert type pipes. Uh, that was the, the decoy load. Underneath is a large false compartment that these people were just laying down in there, um, exposed to the elements, basically laying on really hard mesh and while they were transported here from the border. They reported being in that compartment for upwards of about three hours. Obviously, not much uh, by way of, of water. Um, so, hence the medical emergencies, the heat-related injuries that we have. They were able to be brought into the house. Uh, once we, we verified that there had been people in a trailer, the quick concern for us became, what's their medical condition like? So we actually went in under exigent circumstances to safeguard, make sure that nobody was in there was, was critically ill or, or even worse, dying. Uh, we went in and we secured the residence. Uh, several people ran from the residence on foot. So right now, aside from the 26 uh, victims that we have, we have seven suspects under arrest that were involved in the smuggling uh, operation itself. So 26 and seven total. Um, I'm sorry, so my mistake, it's 26 total, seven suspects. Um, so of those 11, they've all been taken to area hospitals. Uh, the 20, the, the remaining 19, I believe, are going to be taken in for questioning. At present, we don't know uh, who is going to be uh, arrested if they have any additional going to jail as a result of the of the operation itself. It's quite common for coyotes to pass themselves off as, as victims. So in other words, they'll blend in with the crowd of victims and only until we start drawing the information out of them is then we're able to determine that this is not a victim, this is a bad guy. Um, at present, the, fed, the feds are here, uh, HSI and Border Patrol are here and they're going to be taking over the status of the of the victims. So at present, we just don't know who else may be going to jail. What I said in Spanish, guys, that I neglected to tell you all in English, so I'll repeat it now, is in the back residence, we actually found several bulletproof vests uh, as well as long rifles uh, that were used. I don't know if any of those rifles were automatic or semi-automatic, but it is quite possible. I mean, obviously, those are natural things to find in a smuggling operation like this, clearly cartel-related. Uh, so at, the, at present, we're just going to be unraveling this whole thing. But we can tell you definitively, we think everybody's out of the woods as far as losing their life. Thankfully, we think that with the help of our other stakeholders, we got them to the hospital quickly. Yes, it's, yes, there is a woman uh, within the group that um, she's from Guatemala. The rest, I don't yet know nationalities. It's possible that we have others from other countries. But just her, we know for a fact, uh, she paid $16,000 US to be smuggled to this point. So, I mean, if you just got one of these people paying 16 grand, there's 26 smuggling victims. This is a big money operation. 
Uh, I believe so. I believe that's the, that's the, that they were coming from the Laredo area. So this, this house back here, it's pretty much a shack. Uh, it's, it's in some, are, some areas of it, it's elevated, uh, but it's open air. It's got open, the windows are open. There's no AC in there. There's no running water. They've, they've got buckets that everybody's been utilizing as toilets. And for, I don't even, I didn't even see any source of drinking water. Uh, but it's miserable conditions there, and it's just blazing hot in there. So, uh, I mean, just fortunately, we were able to get these people before any of them passed as a result. Well, we found out about it this morning, uh, but we do believe that it's part of a, a larger operation that's been in existence for some time. Yami, you had a question? Yeah, can you go over the numbers again? Sure. 26 victims, 11 transported to the hospital, uh, 7 in custody that we believe are coyotes, um, and so that, those are the running numbers right now of the, of the victims. We know that one is from Guatemala. She paid about $16,000 cash to, to get to this point. We don't know what countries of origin the others are from, but the, the federal agencies that are here will be trying to help us determine that as well. Well, it's what we've been seeing. Um, and look, these, let's make no mistake about it. These people still have the ability to claim asylum. Uh, this is the fault of the cartels that put these people at risk. There's really, the, with the way the system is now, there's no reason for these folks to have been, uh, you know, to, to be smuggled across. Now, with that being said, I was just talking to some of my deputies. We don't yet know if these people came over the border this morning or if they were already here in a stash house in another part of the state on this side of the border. We don't know if they were smuggled across against their will. We just don't know at this point. So it's, it's too early to tell, but again, this is the fault of the bloodthirsty organizations that are bringing these people across and, and putting them in harm's way. When was yes, this sir. location? You mentioned there was a shack, but it, I mean, is this a business? Is this a home? It's a, it's a residence, but the, the home, that, the, the house that you see behind me is where they were being held. And yeah, it, it's, the that's the brown one right there. It's a shack. I mean, there's no, there's, it's, it's got a pier and beam floor. The floor is very spongy. There's holes that you can see through. The windows are all open, but even then, it's just stifling hot inside there. No running water. Uh, there is um, what looks like corrals with dirt inside the residence, right? It looks like they built a corral and then brought dirt in and dumped it on. I think that may be for cockfighting or dogfighting. It's possible. We don't see any evidence of that, but the, that setup right there looks like there may have been some kind of animal fighting going on in there as well. Um, at this point, I don't have information that it's tied into any of our other cases, but it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, many times we'll find uh, residents on the same street that are tied into tied in together. So at present, it's too early for me to link it to anything else that we've got going on, but it wouldn't surprise me to find that out. Well, this is something that we're, that we, it's be, be quite honest, it's been a while since we've seen one. Um, not to say that they're not occurring, but for us, I mean, obviously you see these people try to fly under the radar. Um, that trailer, you could be standing right up on it. It's, it we, I think we'll send you pictures and probably video of it later. Um, you could be standing right there next to it and not know that that thing contains 26 people. Um, so it drove by thousands of cars easily on that three hour trip from the border. And so it's, it, I say that to say that these guys, in, in some instances, they're hiding in plain sight. In other instances, they try to fly under the radar. So, I, you know, it's possible. I mean, I know that there's others out there in the in the city, in the county. So we would use this as an opportunity to remind anybody that they have it. If they have information on a smuggling operation, give us a call, 210-335-6000. Now, I should mention as well, as part of the uh, president's uh, executive order that I was a part of in D.C. a few days ago, uh, there is actually a, a program in the process of being set up, a reward system for people giving tips on smuggling operations. So if you think there is one, give us a call, 210-335-6000. You can also email us and remain anonymous at bcsotips at bear.org. Sheriff, what's the makeup of it? Uh, there was a, a scene just down the road. 